You're welcome back to the key points on 3FM 92.7 as well as TV3. We are live at 3news.com. Thank you very much for staying with us. And thank you for those of you who've sent your messages on Twitter and by SMS uh, so far. So there's been an uptake in the number of Ghanaians who've had their mobile SIM cards linked to their national ID card or Ghana card. Now, many Ghanaians are now realizing that earning their income, making calls, and indeed seeking to facilitate business is going to be daunting going forward without a national ID. Now, a lot of uh, work had been done to inform us uh, this year about this process. The GRA commissioner did same. The Ministry of Communications did same. And also SNIT did same. Now, the reality is now dawning on us that there are implications if we don't get this done. But there's a concern that it seems that people's mobile numbers, people's salary is now becoming the bargaining chip. And many workers are not happy. Let's hear some of them. For the payment side, <laughs> I feel like you've worked for the month and you deserve your pay. So um, I wasn't too happy when they said you will not be paid at the end of the month because of a card. It together. But I feel like it shouldn't be limited to just the Ghana card. I think they should allow the passport and also the voter side because I know I have both and I know they are all biometric because I went through the process of fingerprinting and all. So I think when it's open to all three, it's more flexible than just sticking to just one Ghana card and then in the month to is December, that's a festive period. You can't hold people's money like that. Though it's good to have the Ghana card all right, but it's not something like we should say that yes, unless you have the Ghana card before you have your, your salary. No. If the person is entitled to have his or her salary, let the person have it. If the system is helping, they can use one month. They can register everybody. Look at a big corporation like this. With one computer, how? How many people are you going to register a day? Five, ten people? No, it won't work. They have to give us, give us a little time, at least up to March, so that uh, uh, they can educate people about it. But if they, they start from 1st December, as uh, the, 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 the government was, was saying, I think there, the, there will be a whole lot of confusion all over the ministry, all civil servants. I don't think uh, that one can help. But you say it's a good initiative, though. Yeah, mm, it's a good initiative. So one way or the other, the other this card must work. They have to start from somewhere. Yeah, so that, that, that is my view. I think it is laudable to have the Ghana card as a public servant or anybody at all who is a Ghanaian citizen. For me, if controller thinks uh, getting a Ghana card as a public servant will help to address a particular issue that has been happening yearly, then I am for it. But if also it is a reason that maybe somebody just wants to sit somewhere because the person thinks I have the veto, I have the power, so I can bully workers just by coming to throw any directive at all for workers to follow, then that is a concern. You're welcome back. And those were some public sector workers. And let's introduce our new guest, um, Mr. Abdul Ghaniel, who is the Director for Public Af uh, Corporate Affairs at the National Identification Authority. Good morning, uh, Mr. Ghaniel, and thank you for coming in. Good I know it's been a busy week for Very you. Busy. So first, um, the National Identification Authority has been driving this for quite a while. Why are we now seeing elements of threats so the controller says if public sector workers don't have their card by 1st December, they will not get salary for individuals like me by March. If you don't do the linking and the re-registration, you will have your SIM shut down. It doesn't seem like a, 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 a good approach to engage the citizens, especially on a project that's been going on for so long and there have been hitches through no fault of ours. All right. Thank you very much for having me. And I say good morning to my colleagues here, Honorable Sam George and Gary Nimako. And of course, good morning to viewers as well. Now, what is the mandate of the National Identification Authority? Our mandate is to create 
a central or a comprehensive national identification database that other user agencies can leverage on in delivery of their own services where the identity of individuals who come before them has to be established. And indeed, as every Ghanaian is aware, we embarked on a mass registration exercise that took us to every region of the country. And the target during mass registration was to capture 80% of the adult population. And 80% of the adult population meant people who were 15 years and above. When mass registration ended, we looked at the numbers and realized that we're just a percentage shy of that 80% target. So we conducted a mop-up registration again where we clustered the regions of this country into various zones. We went round again to conduct registration. And by the time the mop-up came to an end, September 2020, we had captured 85% of that adult population. But of course, we recognize that there was still some 15% of the adult population yet to register, and also a whole population of persons from zero up to 14 that we haven't registered at all. So going forward, there was then the need to establish permanent regional and district offices across the country to facilitate what we call continuous registration. So that registration and the rendering of identity management services become an everyday affair that anyone at all can access at the district level. So that is what we have been at. But in the identity management space, the best practice is to always capture about 80% of the population that will have continuous need of the data from time to time. So where you have captured 85%, then it will make sense that all these other user agencies can begin to leverage on it, can begin to piggyback on it and whatnot. And that's what we have been experiencing over the last couple of months. But is it really the case that 80% um, of the adult population have been captured? Because I continually hear people say they registered for the card, but they never got it. So it may be that you have a certain data that shows you people have been registered. But it's about whether people have these cards in hand, that is the matter. Jiva, we embarked on the registration when we hadn't conducted the population and housing census yet. But even the projections that we made, the population and housing census figures have come to vindicate that. We're looking at a population of about 30 million. And the adult population, persons 15 years and above, will come up to about 19 million, not up to 20 million. So by the end, of the mass registration, we captured over 15 million Ghanaians. So that, in essence, gives you about 85% of so that why are adult people complaining? population. Why you know, are I public mean, sector workers unhappy that they, they will lose their salary because they've not linked their card? But people are certainly going to complain, even if it's one person who has not yet registered for the Ghana card. Obviously, the person will speak about it. So you are hearing people in their tens, in their hundreds, or even in their thousands who have not yet registered for the Ghana card. For these people, so as long as they are Ghanaians and they are not precluded in any way or form, they will surely talk about the fact that they've not yet registered, and we are going to hear their voices. But isn't but it the case that your officers have seen an upset? I drove there on Tuesday, and the numbers were huge. You've had to set, set up tents from one end of your wall <laughs> to the other. You've removed your cars to exactly. do that. And, and I'll be making the point that if you come to headquarters, it's not just persons coming to do new registration. You have other people who have lost their cars, mm -hmm. and those people have come for those cars to be replaced. You have others who come to do updates. So say wrong spelling of a name or somebody has gotten married and wants to add the husband's name to her name, any kind of update that the person wants to do. The person can come to the NIA, and NIA will do the update and print a new card for him or her. Then you also have foreigners who come to register for the non-citizenship card. So when you come to the NIA, you find all these people there seeking various services, but you get the impression 
that all the people here are for new registration. There's just one tent that takes care of people who come to do new registration. All the other tents you find are probably update card replacement of foreigners who have come to register for the Ghana card. But I do totally agree with you. We should be able to set up more regional and district officers so that at the doorstep of each and every Ghanaian, they are able to seek our services. And that's what we are working towards. I've been assuring that by end of October, these officers would have been set up so that first week of November, new registration will start at the district and regional levels. And then people who have lost their cars would also have the opportunity for those cards to be replaced. So, so, so those are the timelines that we have given ourselves. And that should tie in with the concern about controller, because they have given a deadline of first December. So that whole month of November, people who have not yet registered for the Ghana card would have the opportunity to do so. And we believe that nobody will lose out on his or her salary. Honorable George, is the first December deadline for workers in the public sector a realistic and fair one because it, many of them were not happy when we checked in with them. Jifa, what's the legal basis for that directive by the Controller and Accountant General? What, what law? Are under the what law gives them the power to do that? They mentioned the, the law that requires they manage the public pairs and make payments, and it is based on that. I don't have the exact... Yeah, uh, no, if production can help us, because I, I'm yet to see any law. They mentioned... In fact, we do that, have the sound of the controller. That, who, that, uh, that, the says, that says, a law that says that a Ghanaian civil servant who has worked cannot receive their salary except they have a Ghana card. They are linked. Or oh, except the card is linked? I, I would love to see no, that law. Not specifically using Ghana, but they, they mentioned the law. We'll play the sound. Yes, I'll, I'll be grateful if we'll you play do. the sound. help with that? But okay, if, if you have, so help sure, us sure, with that. Yeah. I mean, the National Identification Register Regulation 2012, LI211, provides the mandatory uses of the Ghana card. And for the 14 mandatory uses that have been mentioned, there's an aspect that says application for public or government services, facilities, approvals, permi permissions, or benefits, mm -hmm. right? So the Control and Accountant General Department is an institution can I, can of the can state. Can you repeat again what you just said? Can you repeat again? Applications for public or government services facilities, approvals, permissions, or benefits, all right? So, so this is what is provided at part of so the this is the basis. Of no, but, the basis. but that's for the Ghana card itself. It's not about the see, salary. See, no, no, you see, you see, I think, let's not confuse You provided the information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, allow but, me to now make okay. but I need to clarify that just after stating that, so you will come in. The Controlling Accountant General Department will have to be able to establish the identity of individuals who are on government payroll. And that they do from time to time. I mean, I take salary from control, and I know the number of times I had to go through that process. We have finally arrived at a point where a comprehensive national identification database exists. And the NIA has the sole mandate in collecting biometric data. So the Control and Accountant General Department gets to a point where they feel that we now have a secure biometric system in place. They are simply encouraging or asking all public sector workers on the payroll of the state, go do your biometrics mm -hmm. so that it will be easy to identify you on the payroll. Okay. What is wrong with that? Okay, Honorable George. If, I, if this is the reason, Section 7, 1M of LI2111 is the reason the controller and accountant general is giving this directive. It flies in the face of the law. It is baseless. It is not factual and cannot stand the test in any proper court of jurisdiction. Ah, I'm reading it. I have it open here. That's why I said I wanted to hear what it is. My wages are not a benefit, a government benefit. My wages are covered by the Labor Act. 
that stipulates that everybody who works is due a wage. My wage cannot be interpreted to be a government benefit. A government benefit will be if I'm getting a... a encourage people to go and register. No, 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 no. no let, Gary, you're a lawyer. Encourage. Let's, yeah, yes, let's, encourage let's do law. No, no, no. <laughs> you cannot hide... Encourage people to go and register. You, no, encourage. if you want us to encourage people encourage, to register, yes, let's encourage. do that. Encourage, yes, but do right. not twist the law. Yeah, encourage people to register. And do not claim law that doesn't exist. Okay, but that's should why... we even be putting these kinds of you see, deadlines? It's almost is seems... It, and And... To be fair, the SIM registration deadline is for six months till March. Mm -hmm. So for public sector workers, Jifa, first December, it seems to, a bit harsh. Jifa, Jifa, listening to my brother, you see, the attitude of government agencies, be the Controller and Accounting General or the Ministry of, Def of, 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 of Communications on this uh, uh, SIM card registration, it's, 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 it's wrong. Look, like I said, LI-2111 is not an omnibus legislation. No. It is a legislative instrument for the NIA and its operations. And the interpretation of Section 7, and I'll serve notice, mm -hmm. I'll be heading to court. <laughs> because, you see, and I've, ex I've engaged the Minister of Communications on the SIM card registration. In fairness to her, she said she would seek further legal advice on it. But, I mean, it's almost a month, and so I would proceed to she's court on it. She's listening. That's fine. She'll, she'll bear me out that we engaged her and even did a press conference on it. Because, you see, my position is simple, Jifa. Read what it says in Section 7. It says, a national identity card issued to an individual shall be used for the following transactions where identification is required. Mandatory. However... Take, for example, when you are registering SIM cards. The law for registration of SIM cards in Ghana is not LI-2111. The law that governs registration of SIM cards is LI-2006. LI-2006 of 2011, Subscriber Identity Model Registration Regulations. Subscriber Identity Model is SIM. SIM, yes. SIM Registration Regulations, 2011, LI-2006. And this is what it says. It says in section two of that LI, listen, two one, a network operator or service provider shall register a SIM of a subscriber. Two two, a subscriber for the purpose of the registration of the SIM of that subscriber shall furnish the network operator or service provider with the following information. A the name and residential or occupational address of the subscriber. B, the date of I, BEF, in the case of an individual, II, incorporation, in the case of a body corporate, or III, registration, in the case of a partnership or an unincorporated body of persons. And C, an identification document. So once it asks for an identification, that is, this is the law that governs SIM card registration in Ghana. Now, if it says I should provide my address and name and my date of birth and an identification document, the LI-2111 says in section 7, mm -hmm. 7K thereabouts, mm -hmm. 7L, that it shall be used, the Ghana card shall be used for the registration of SIM cards. It then means that in the list of documents that can be an identity document under LI 2006, even if there are only two, the Ghana card <laughs> must be one of them. But it does not say it that specify. it must be the only card. So the argument we are making is that if you are going to go by the law, and that's why I said everything is regulated by law. Salaries are not regulated by LI 2111. People are behaving the NIA is behaving as though LI-2111 is the law that governs everything in this country. No, sorry. It regulates you. It doesn't regulate registration of SIM cards. There's a law, LI-2006, that has not been amended. Payment of salaries is regulated by the, there's the Workman's Compensation Act, there's the Labor Act. That is what governs the payment of salaries. You cannot withhold my salary because I don't have a card. There is no law backing it. And so you see, Jifa, he says workers have to be. I was a, I've been a civil servant before. I worked in Ghana civil service before coming into active politics in 2010. 
I went and did biometric verification. He works in the public service. He's done biometric verification. <clears throat> the controller and accountant general through the Ministry of Finance holds biometric data of the six or 800,000 government workers. They don't need a Ghana card to verify who they are paying. So what do, what do you think they need? Any identity document? Uh, they have biometric data. So and, they should and, use and, that? And, and the heads of agencies, as it speaks now, the heads of agencies have to authorize, they, they do an authorization to the controller to verify the payroll before it is, it, the, the controller pays. So when, for, take for example, you take NIA head office. The HR at NIA head office would have to fill out a form and sign to the controller and accountant general that there are 614 workers. Yeah, but that's, with their just, names. that's just putting the number there. It doesn't no, do no, the, the kind 600, of... The, no, the 614 workers have names. Now, those names have already... All of those names have been captured biometrically at the Ministry of Finance. I remember that, you get that it? Yes. program that because took if I, place. Ah, if I give you a Ghana card number, what's the guarantee that I'm still at post? The guarantee that you will not have people being paid who are not at post is not the linkage to a Ghana card. I can have a Ghana card. No, but the biometric data on the Ghana card also would identify. Jifa, the, no. Why? Are they going to swipe my biometric card before they pay me? No. That's what I'm saying that, look, we are applying this thing wrongly. Okay. You are doing the right thing the wrong way because you thought, no, let's just clarify this. Okay. I, I wanted to in, 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 in one oh, minute. Oh, sure. Go ahead. But I just want to let you know yes. that. I want to in one minute. The point I'm making here is that what is the value of the Ghana card? Because the value for payment of salaries, if you link my, my, my controller number to my Ghana card, it is, not a, it is not proof that I have been at work for the month and earned my salary. What is proof of that work is the HR document <coughs> that comes. And my point is, Ghana card has biometrics, yes, but those biometrics already are also on them account of the on the books of the CAGD. So it should not it doesn't solve anything. It's the same way for SIM card. We are being told that SIM fraud can be trapped using the Ghana card linked to a SIM card. Why? Because if you bring a Ghana card and we register the SIM in your name, if you if that card is used for fraud, we are going to be able to trace you. And and whether you know the person or not, you are the identifier. It is it is it is incorrect. Jifa Anybody, and look, please go and do a Vox Pop and ask how many Ghanaians who have Ghana cards generated their Ghana Post GPS, which is the address on the NIS database, at the registration center. Many people who were registered on the Ghana card process, during the Ghana card process, had GPS codes at the school or under the tree or the church compound where the NIA was set up. That is where the code was generated. So even if I link that SIM, my SIM card to that card, and I commit fraud, touch wood, perish the thought, I commit crime, and you need to trace me, and you go and pull that GPS code, it will take you to a tree under a school building, in, in a school. It will bring you to my home. And even if it brings you, even if I generated from my home, residential mobility among a large chunk of Ghanaians is very high because of rent issues. Every six months or one year, people change residences. So you see, it's a good thing. I am for I am for it that let's get a Ghana card. Everybody should go and register it. But don't issue threats. And don't go about using a law that doesn't apply to say that the law says this when the law doesn't say it. Run a promotion or a, 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 an educational promotion that allows, when I say promotion, not financial, but promoting the idea of getting the Ghana card and the values for it. But let me ask, since it's here, how much will it cost me today if I walk to the Ghana NIA to get a Ghana card? The NIA, I'm hearing it's 250 Ghana That service. is because you want premium service. That is what, but it's free. If you go to the Registrar General's Department or any uh, SNIT or uh, the GRA the where GRA they are is. registering, it is free. It is free. How long will I, get, will I take to get my card? It's not supposed to take long. That's but the question frame. is, no, but it's not supposed a, to take if long. If I'm a controller, the truth, I, if I'm a controller truth, staff, okay, but I need to know when I'll get it no, so that I don't lose my salary. Not supposed, we need okay, but it's not supposed to take more than 15 minutes from what I know. But, but ask him but, how many of the 15 million cards they but, claim yeah, they registered, have they, have they distributed? But, uh -huh. So those, okay. the question to you, Mr. and we'll come to Mr. Nimaku, please. Okay. So just hold the question. But the other issue... Uh, Honorable George raises about even the registration. Mm. Because we are told that even at the offices of the GRA, where people come and register, 
they can only register a certain or they are required to register a certain number during the day. Yep. It does it means then that they can't register ad infinitum. It means that if it's three o'clock, they've registered hundred people and that's the required number, they pack up shop. Yep. And that's an issue. So hold that thought. Yes, Gary. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm wondering why my brother uh, Sam George Honorable had water by his side, but he will not drink the water. Oh, yeah, you're doing propaganda. Hey, show, show my water. I have drunk half. I have, drunk, I have even drunk more water than Gary. Raise your bottle, let's see. You see, you see, you see, he made fantastic points listening to him. And listening no, to my so brother, at rest, well. for me, the immediate yeah. issue, should the public sector workers be held to this first December day? Because it's not far away. Um, if I raise a difficult question for me, but you see, let me say that uh, I do not think, in my personal view, in my personal view, I do not think that um, this deadline appears feasible. And I do not think that this deadline uh, really can be implemented, uh, given the NIA's own peculiar challenges. Let's face it. Uh, NIA didn't start today. I mean, it started on the first time. They had the issues with it. Some cars were issued. Some NGC uh, came. You know, they, they try to continue, you know, all sort of things. Now, there's a whole, you know, systemic thing to try to reinvigorate and put some fire in it, which I agree with them. Now, is it really the case that they have captured 80% of, <laughs> of Ghanaians? Is it really the case? Uh, what data supports that they've captured 80% of public sector workers or Ghanaians? I think that... Uh, we should rather encourage people to register. We should, you see, because you see, if we say that somebody who has worked and, and uh, the person will not be given the salary because he does not have an, uh, an what do we call it? NHA, NHIA card, whatever you call it. NIA card. Ghana card. You see, let us be honest with ourselves. We are going to create work for lawyers. That's the honest truth. <laughs> you create work for lawyers. Because uh, if it is true that I have work, if it is true that, I have, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm required to be given some remuneration, some pay, uh. whatever, and then you say that you are not going to pay me because I do not have an HIA card. <laughs> There's a likelihood that those people might, you know, file civil suits uh, against their employers, mm -hmm. and by extension, the government. What I will want to say, in all honesty and sincerity, is that National Identification Authority must try to ensure that they register as much more people that they can register. What is the rationale for all these things? It is because of these ghost, 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 ghost names and all these things. That is why I think that the control is trying to synchronize people who are actually working and those who are perceived to be on the payroll, but they are not, in fact, supposed to be there. The other thing is the policy rationale. So that we pay people who indeed are alive, people who indeed ought to be paid. But sometimes, if you are not careful, the intention is good. But the communication may have some difficulties with it. Mm. Because I do not think that whoever made the announcement that if you, do not, if you, don't, if you don't register by, by, by first, first of December. whatever, you will not get your salary by the end of the month. That is a December. Probably maybe intended evil. I don't think so. Christmas salary. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe the communique. The communique was that, no. hey, now they say if you don't register, you will not get salary, so then it will motivate people to go and what? Register the card and have their names put on the payroll. So at the end of the day, when they are being paid, they can realize that we are paying one million workers. These one million workers indeed are alive, they are, they are going to work, even not that sort of thing. But if genuinely somebody who has indeed worked and there is proof they have worked, and for the fact that you just say that they don't have the Ghana card, and so therefore you will not pay. We are only going to vex the system with our legal suit. 
that that is the point that i want to make so i will want you the authorities to encourage that's why i was somebody was talking and i realized that he was not drinking water <laughs> okay, but there's a separate... if, if you had drunk water, you will have slowed down a bit. Because okay. I said encourage. Okay, so that's... let's encourage all of us very people. Lovely. Cheers. Uh, thank you very much. You see, if you, if you, you see, if you had drunk water, you will have paused a bit. You see, we should encourage people to register. They should register. They should register. I mean, okay. because the intention is very clear. Okay, it so... is not because somebody wants to do anything even for. It's just that we must have one of the system mm. so that public money is protected. That is all. Okay, so Mr. Ganyu, let's just yes. take a break and then when we come back, okay. then you can right. take That's off in good. full flight. It's still um, key points here on TV3 and 3FM. Some of you have sent your messages already. I'll read them because a lot of it goes to Mr. Ganyu. We we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Biggest vocal talents to pass to all honors of this great country. They came in hundreds, all with one dream to win the title and become the next global icon to emerge from Ghana. Some unfortunately had their dreams crushed. But the very best moved on. You have qualified! <laughs> Earning the rarest music career opportunity of a lifetime and with the bar raised higher than ever before will challenge their skills and endurance in some of the most difficult challenges mentor has ever seen. the grand outdooring of the final 16 contestants of Mentor X this Sunday at 8 p.m. on TV3. And I'm talking to you, Jayla. Do not miss this. TV3 Mentor takes you higher. Mentor X is brought to you by Heaven Black Mosquito Coil, an insecticide spray, and Napa Foods, Sense Body Spray. <laughs> Our aim is to touch lives in many forms. We go in depth as we focus on true life stories. Life became pathetic. We ran short of food and water. Mm. Indeed, we were looking for death. Mm -hmm. Death has also rejected us. It was like God has also rejected us. So nothing wanted us. What's new in the trends as we look at fashion, entertainment, cuisine, games and more? Check mm -hmm. your body type before you go in for some attacks. So in every aspect of our relationship, you find it funny, right? Yeah. Even, <laughs> even during... <laughs> Sex is their food. We have the watermelon type, the apple type, the... Which one am I? Purple. <laughs> I have, I, I have the purple type that. that goes this way. Okay. Just stay connected with me on all platforms. Oh, and share that story to be heard by simply reaching out to us on all our social media platforms with the hashtag The Day Show. My guests and I look forward to a date with you this and every Thursday at 9 p.m. as we keep it real, positive, and fun. Time with Bella Mundi on the day show is an encounter right here on TV3. The day show with Bella Mundi now shows on Thursdays at 9 p.m. and repeats on Saturdays at 3 p.m. on TV3. <laughs> You know that when you see me on your screens, it means it's all about fun, fun, excitement, <laughs> lots of laughter, and games. I dare you to kneel down after, and say my name. After he loses. Yeah. If, you, if you lose, you get to post me on all your social media platforms saying Incredible oh, is the greatest of all time. Whoever loses in the end of the very game will have to <laughs> do the dare. This is the only show in the entire history of the world that I have the best dancers in Africa. Yes, yes, yes. Rivera, 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 Rivera. 
Celebrity Fun Time this Saturday, 5 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by Betway. <laughs> Welcome to the summons. We bring you a show that gives you a good blend of gospel music, the word of God, and everything inspiration to a Christian heart. And it's a call to discipleship. It's a place where you connect with and also receive from God. The summons. The summons. The summons. The summons. The summons. The summons. Brought to you by myself, Benjamin of Ayado, and Na Ashoko. Keep watching the summons. You'll be blessed. The Summons shows Sundays at 11.30 a.m. and repeat on Wednesdays at 12 a.m. on TV3. Since 2014, the Sweden Ghana Medical Center, SGMC, has helped many Ghanaian teachers with free cancer treatment. This timely intervention has saved the lives of many members of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, including their spouses and children. That financial stress that NAT took, uh, that was a big relief. It was a big relief to the family. With increasing awareness, many more NAT members are getting free treatment of cancer at SGMC. But in order to sustain this life-saving scheme, NAT is appealing to all members to consider contributing only five Ghana cities monthly instead of two Ghana cities. We are asking that let us together increase the money from the two Ghana cities to the five Ghana cities. Remember, a monthly contribution of only five Ghana cities to NAT will ensure that all teachers, together with their spouses and children, continue to enjoy free treatment at SGMC. Watch NAT R on TV3 as various beneficiaries share their touching life-saving stories. NAT Hour, a documentary of hope for Ghanaian teachers. Not Hour shows Wednesdays at 5.45 p.m. and on Sundays at 1.30 p.m. on TV3. You're welcome back. And some quick messages before we hear from uh, Mr. Ganiu. This one from Stephen in Cape Coast. Some of us registered but couldn't get our cards. This is no fault of ours. Please let your guests inform us where we can get our cards in the various districts. And he's writing from Cape Coast. But you didn't tell us mm -hmm. when you registered to enable give uh, a better idea. This one says, kindly find out for me, is it true that to register for the NIA card, you have to pay 250 CDs? No. If you go to the head office requesting premium service, you pay 250 CDs. However, if you go to any GRA office or SNIT offices where the NIA has a setup, you can register for free. Uh, this one says, in fact, we are suffering in getting registered by the NIA. We are suffering to receive the card. I registered a second day when they began, but till now, I can't find the card. You can't find the card or you didn't get the card. Alfred, you need to be a bit more specific. That's Alfred writing to us from WA. Uh, this one says, please ask the NIA official, um, why are they collecting money from Ghanaians when this is a card that all of us as Ghanaians should have? Why should they charge us for this service? And this one says, good morning, TV3. I collected my card and realized that my date of birth was wrong. I went to the NIA office in Tamale to correct it, but they said they are not doing corrections. How do I correct this? Okay, so you first start with uh, yeah, the Yeah, just, just you some two very important reactions. Now, Honorable Sam George alludes to the subscriber identification model, LI, um, that was in 2011, right? The LI we are talking about, in respect of the mandatory uses of the Ghana card, was passed in 2012. So you're talking about one in 2011 and the other in 2012. And let's be fair here. Even though the National Identification Authority was set up in 2006 by the Act 707, 
the authority really <laughs> never got on the ground as was expected. It was all hit and miss, hit and miss. And I am told that it even goes way back to the 1970s when we made our first attempt at creating a national identification database. So clearly, while services are being provided and organizations will continue to establish the identity needs of individuals, they were surely going to rely on other forms of identities that existed. So if you talk about an identity document, at the time in 2011, where was the Ghana card? The Ghana card certainly did not exist. I am not a lawyer. If it will take us to go back and fine tune all of these laws, but the most important thing is to understand the intention, to understand what the overall goal or overall objective is, is for us to be able to rely on one source of identity. But in the past, if you didn't have a Ghana card, obviously, a voter ID should suffice, a SNIT biometric card should suffice, a passport, so on and so forth. But having gotten to this point, where that comprehensive database has been built, NHIS has stopped issuing identity cards. SNIT has stopped issuing identity cards. And all the other organizations that will normally issue their own identity cards are going to stop. So that is the intention. I mean, Gary is a lawyer here, and he being an honorable member of parliament, I would assume, understands the law better than I do. But we should be looking at the intention going forward, whether it is OK to have a one system secure means of identity that can easily establish the identity means of all of us, or we should still have this plethora of identity cards well, we should, in the not, system. Not necessarily plethora, but we should give people options. No, wait. So, so, so that's the first point. Then the second point is the biometrics that he seeks to, to, to create an impression that controller and other organizations all have biometrics. So really, they can rely on their own biometrics and not the NIA. The reason you must rely on the NIA is because our biometrics are superior. Apart from just taking the 10 fingerprints, we take the iris and there's also facial recognition. So we are talking about three levels of biometrics. This other organization just take fingerprints. And we are relying on virtually the best vendor that you can find in that space. So as far as crypt cryptography is concerned, and we are talking about CryptoVision. Another sub-vendor is Demolog, for instance, when it comes to what we call automated biometric identification system, where the three layers of biometrics are taken, the fingerprint, the iris, as well as the facial recognition. So we have moved to this point where we can say that we have a superior source of biometrics. And that is why controller and accountant general would want to rely on that so that the payroll become cleaner than ever before. And I think that's a very good objective. There are some controller-related issues that perhaps you need to invite controller and accountant general to come and deal with. But for us at NIE, we can only speak of our mandate. Our mandate is to register Ghanaians, issue them with identity cards, and ask and when a user agency wants to rely on the data, we make it available mm. to but, them. But some organizations so, are even withholding pensions. I just got a message that seniors, senior citizens are having their pensions withheld because they don't have an NIA card. And that's, that's it, a yes. bit so, so that is because it is one of the mandatory uses of the Ghana card as well. And the opportunity to register for the Ghana card for these persons who have not yet registered is there. So it's a matter of going to register for the Ghana card and supplying that information for your pensioner. How about a pensioner who is not mobile? How about a pensioner who is not mobile? You see, we need to look, understand what the goals or the objectives are. We understand are we going the goals, to say, but we must but, be I, flexible to people's me. unique Are we going to say that, but for these challenges... but for this, I'm not catching you. You see, you see uh, 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 as you rightly said, the intention is to make, pay, make the payroll much more cleaner. Exactly. You see? Yes. But in doing so, we should be very careful with accrued rights. Accrued rights. Somebody has worked. I mean, he's entitled to his pension, and we, we, we hold pension because he doesn't have Ghana Gary, card. And I is not holding a pension. No, no, no organizations are doing it. Not, 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 not
So, so because of the non-issuance or non-available NIA card, you should be very careful. You see, I try, let's try to sometimes balance the issues. Uh, because these sort of things, it can invite legal suits against the government. Do, do you get the point? So, that, well, so, but the question is, why is the president also not having an NIA card? Well, then, is it that you, he has not gone to register? A lot of, or, you know, or, a lot of seniors or, are at home. They are not exactly on the move. And then the registration no, they, 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 they comes, they the place is crowded. Available for registration. I, I think that the solution to you know? this problem is the timelines okay. that these USA agencies have started giving. Probably policy makers around the table will have to take a look exactly. at it. That I totally agree. Exactly. So that if controller announces their dates, at the end of the day, NIA cannot hold controller to whatever decisions that they make. But we can only continue to work on our mandate by ensuring that registration facilities are made available yeah. as much as possible. Right. Then people get registered for right. the Ghana card. We have always communicated that it is by end of October, early November, that all our 291 officers would have been set up. When that happens, everyone can walk to the district office and obtain a Ghana card so easily. But for now, we have just 34 registration centers across the country, and those are located at premises. Okay, of so, so let's just, so yeah, we have, we have yes. a visual if of I, the so, controller's so if, if, if so, spokesperson. If it is so, if it is so, <laughs> that even you have a, our own challenges in making sure that we have operationalized the entire machinery, yes. the, then why do we give timeline of December 1? Why? Exactly. So put that to controller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's the point I'm Let's hear the Let us make things a bit, a bit fair for everybody. Yes, yes. You understand? Uh -huh. Let's hear the uh, spokesperson for the controller and accountant general, the head of public relations, Mr. Sefas Nadusu. The responsibility of the controller and accountant general is to receive, disperse, and provide secure custody of public funds. And so we take the necessary precautions in protecting government funds. And one of such mechanism is the reliance on the database of the National Identification Authority. Systems evolve. And as much as systems are evolving, our institution is also supposed to evolve its internal control processes to continue to maintain the standards that is anticipated. The controller does not take delight in stopping people's salaries, I mean, excuse me, by heart. Um, but then, as much as we want to pay everyone what is due him, we also have the responsibility of making sure that we can account for what we are paying. And that is exactly what the controller is doing. So we we'll pay everyone who is legitimately due to any salary and also take what it takes to verify who needs to be paid before that payment is effected. I have listened to my colleague at the National Administration Authority. And I'm aware that currently they have deployed about 34 registration centers, and they are adding more. It means that they have the capacity and they are doing what it takes to register as many people as possible. And I think that until you, one makes the attempt and the effort to assess the facility, we can never tell that we cannot go through. The deadline is not today. So the best thing is for us to avail ourselves. You have not registered, it is better you make an attempt to go and register. When we get to the deadline, I mean, we'll review data, and I'm sure the right decisions will be taken by the right authorities. Now, what we are supposed to do, is, or intend to do, is not a one-off verification. But we want to be able to do what we call the continuous verification of payroll and pensions. And so the easy database that is available is the National Identification Authority um, database that has the biometric um, details or credentials of all Ghanaians, including government of Ghana employees. So we're back, and uh, that was the spokesperson for the Office of the Controller Accountant General, Sefas. Now, do so. So, Honorable George. I listened to Mr. Ghani, <laughs> and he does a good job as a PR <laughs> for an agency. He puts a good spin on it, but it doesn't mean. Spin. It doesn't oh, mean. No, no, no. I mean, no. 
I, I don't mean that in a derogatory manner. Exactly. Man. I mean, no, no, not, not at all. I, I'm, I'm crediting you for doing a good no, no, job. You speak, the messaging is called something okay, else. Okay, so the <laughs> no. messaging, he's okay, on so, the message. So, so, so he's sticking to his speaking points. Mm. He's oh, really? sticking to his message. Yes. No, it's what the now, facts. now, now. <laughs> The fact that those are his speaking points do not mean they are entirely correct. First and foremost, you may have three layers or even five layers of biometrics. But the fundamental question I ask relative to workers of Ghana is how does my Ghana card be linked to my controller and accountant general's num uh, 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 number, my staff number at controller and accountant general, prove that I have worked or not worked? to withhold my, to warrant withholding my salary. <laughs> the layers of biometric show nothing. It is not as though every day when I go to the office, I must swipe my Ghana card in and swipe it out. Clocking for you to clock. clock in and clock out, for you to then say that you are cross-checking my attendance. So how payment of salaries is on the basis of work done. How does the linkage in all the fine things he said, the fine messaging he's put out, he has failed to show us the linkage between the Ghana card and proof or justification for pay, which is what the controller is doing. Again, I am saying, show me how all of these fine biometrics will lead you to a fraudster who has used the same card to perpetrate fraud, bearing in mind that the residential address you hold or your database was not verified. At the time people registered for the Ghana card, you did not do any verification of their, of their residential address. The Ghana post codes that were given to you were never verified. And so how then do you determine that you can use that address? Can I ask a question? You can use that address Let him finish. to track a fraudster using a SIM card and base a whole SIM registration on the basis of just the Ghana card. Look, if I... Do we are you, not here. We also keep coming to the we are not, we are not here. We are, stay, not, stay in we are not here. <laughs> we are not here to say that don't register the SIM. I have said SIM registration or re-registration yeah. by the ministry is a fine step. And, but, and, and there are messages to that effect. But you see, one of them, so let me just quickly you, read it. Says, you, this one says, says I tried registering my SIM. I tried registering my SIM with my Ghana card, but the reply came that my registration oh. could not be completed because yeah. my card is not validated. My question yeah. is, how was I given the card without validation? So you see, and a number of people have experienced Diva, this. Diva, okay. Diva. Even here. Yeah. yeah. You, know the, so, you know where the problem is coming from? The ministry, and I've engaged the Ministry of Communications. The Ministry of Communications <laughs> is going about the SIM card registration the way they are. On the basis of the positioning of the NIE, the Controller and Accountant General is issuing this, po this position of 1st December on the basis of the positioning of the NIE. And that is where the problem is. The NIE must know that the Ghana card cannot be the sole card for every transaction in Ghana. It, will be a, it could be a mandatory card. So for every, at every transaction in Ghana, you can, you can access it if you have the Ghana card. So it's simple for you. So take, for example, if I have a Ghana card and I want to go and do SNIT, I can just go there with that one card. I want to do health insurance. I can go there with that card. But that must not preclude any other person who wants to access the same service with another legally obtained national identity from obtaining that. It doesn't preclude anyone. No, but that's what's happening now. Because I, no. everyone can go for the Ghana. No, because right now, right now, uh -huh. the, Ghana, the position of the agencies is to preclude the, uh, the, the, the enjoyment of certain rights mm -hmm. okay. so long as it is contingent on only the Ghana card. So what we are saying is, for example, the SIM card registration mm -hmm. should be done using the Ghana card the national passport no. and the voter's ID card. Because that is what the law says, not what NIA thinks. The law that I read to you, section 2-2, 2-2, uh, 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 C or something, of LI 2006, says that the registration of a SIM card must be done with an identity document. It does not say with a national identity card. It says an identity document. The Ghana passport is a national identity card. My voter's ID card is a national identity card. 
Today you are asking me to use a Ghana card. A Ghana card that I cannot even use in a bank. Says who? A Says lot everybody. A lot of people cannot use it. It is true. The banks true. are not accepting the Ghana card. It is true, Mr. Ganiu. Okay, so, so just give, just give me it some time. Mr. Ganiu, it is true. A lot of people cannot use the Ghana card in their banks. So, so can I react to that? The banks are not using that because there is a perception that we have not engaged fully with the banks. I understand there are some charges that go with the use. The banks are unwilling to They are unwilling to use the Ghana card. So they have rejected the Ghana card. So let me make the point here. The difficulty was an electronic verification platform where if a Ghana card user gets to the bank, the bank can get it and verify the person's information. So after mass registration, we have been able to build that platform. We have successfully piloted it with Cal Bank. And as we speak, all their branches accept the Ghana card. Now, as you indicated, the banks themselves must put in place some infrastructure across their branches so that when people come with a Ghana card, they are easily verifiable. At that point, it's not the fault of the NIA. It's not about I'll, money. It's no, not about money. If I, no, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's not, not about so, so people. All point. he has said so, is to say no, that, is to agree that no. if I walk into any of the other 22 oh, universal banks, no, fidelity. I cannot no, use listen, the listen, Ghana listen. card. As and when a if bank is ready, this is the fact. As and when a bank is ready, the bank can and they I'm, are I'm closing, I'm closing and going. So, so a couple of banks have already been on board there. UBA is on board there. Fidelity is on board there. So the onus at this point is on the banks to get their infrastructure ready, signal NIA, and they get on board. Mr. Ganyu, then quickly, if I walk quickly. to any of the commercial banks Sam. today, if I walk to Ghana Commercial Bank, Ghana Commercial Bank is the largest bank with the largest branches in Ghana. Can I use my Ghana card in so Ghana Commercial Bank? So tell Ghana Commercial Bank. It's a yes or no. Come on board. Can I use simple? it? No. Uh, no. But if I go there with my voter ID card, I can use it. it. We, we, we all keep missing the point. No, no, no. The banks are not using it. Jifa, I think this point is about Ghana card. As much as possible, just give me the time. Out of to make this universal bank. You see, NIA is in the middle of all these So there is the need for a more multi-sectoral. So yes, we'll go to court and get a yes. The rule point. on this matter. Simple. So, so you, here's you the plan point. to go to court? Oh, yes. So, Why? ours. Because they are misinterpreting L section 7 of LI 2111 and using that to tie the hands of all other state agencies and making the, the Ministry of Communication say they can only use the Ghana card. Me making the uh, controller and counter say, say, say you can only um, use Ghana card. Jifa. If not for the interpretation of section NIA. 7 of LI 211 by NIA, the Ministry of Communication, I know would have allowed for other cards, national ID cards. But it's because of the NIA's posture. So and so we quite, challenge that interpretation quite, quite in the a, Supreme Court. <laughs> you say quite a couple no, of no, issues. You, you okay, so I have to yeah, let Honorable Sam George go because he said a, a number of he has issues, an appointment. A, a number of issues have gone to court mm -hmm. in respect of NIA. It's almost time. Right from 2017 up Six to date. Minutes. And I can assure you that on, such, on all such court cases, NIA has triumphed. So it's, we cannot do anything wrong. So as far as our interpretation of the law is concerned. I guess we we'll have equally to... have lawyers or a legal team that will go through the lines and at all times read, read give us you. the interpretation. Quickly on is the... Is the use... Supreme Court just, that just will, very quickly, will settle that matter yes, for us? Very quickly on this matter of why only the Ghana card and not passport and others for same registration and whatnot. Again, ask the, the National Communication Authority and the telecos, what is the objective for the SIM card re-registration? It's about KYC. Know your customer, all right? And when it comes to establishing the identity of the individual, if you have a national identity card as against other sectoral identity cards, for instance, if you talk about the Senate biometric card, if I am not a Senate subscriber, I cannot get we that card. Said SNIT. You said use no, the passport. The, go. Passport. 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 What's the essence vote of the card? passport? A passport is to facilitate travel, basically. But it's to an identity document. So it's an identity document. document. The primary document for identification, if you have a Ghana card and a passport, certainly it is a Ghana card. But if I'm traveling, they will not recognize <laughs> Ghana my Ghana card. card. They will look at my passport. Yes, because at that point, at that point, I'll you just need... Read something. Let, Daniel, let no, me no, read no, something so, to you from the law. Mm -hmm. Section 7, the same section oh. 7, 7L, <laughs> sorry, 7J. <laughs> A national identity card issued to an individual shall be used for the following transactions where identification is required. J says registration of voters. We did a voter's registration in 2020. Why was it not only the Ghana card that was used? 
at that time you had printed Ghana cards. So, we so, went to court as well. No, and by that time, the EC went to and parliament. Challenged, and just challenged, a constitutional instrument. And challenged the fact that you cannot so use only the Ghana card. The and that is how come the EC had to come to parliament with a CI that allowed for other cards, including the national passport and the old voter's ID card, to be used as registration source documents. So you cannot continue. It's the same seven. The, the same seven. That says you must use it for the registration of voters, which made it possible for you to go to the EC during the registration with the Ghana card and get registered, but also allow for other cards. It is the same way. The other cards must be allowed for other registrations. I rest my case. Okay, thank you, Honorable so George, and I know you have an appointment. So, Mr. Ganyu, uh, just hold those thoughts there. Let me hear from Mr. Nimafu, okay, right. and then you have uh, the final word. If yes, I, Mr. Nimafu. It, it, it's very unfortunate, you see, that, that uh, what? we come to a program and by some deliberate means, uh, no water is given to some George. Oh. If the water even finishes, he's not, giving, he's not giving another water <laughs> to cool him down. You know, it, 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 it's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> I, I think, uh, you know, He's product, articulating the concerns of Production must uh, find a way us. to give, give him more, more water. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's a process, and some understands. It's a process. And listening to an NI official, Sam George, the general board of the country, I hold a humble view that the process has not ended. You understand? It's a process. Yeah. We should not be giving ultimatums at this stage to say that if you don't have this car, we will not give you pay. Oh, but because even, and, oh, let, let me, let me okay. make the point, and, you know, because you, you see why? The process has not yet terminated. We don't have, I don't believe that indeed we have a full coverage or let's say 90% coverage of all Ghanaian workers on the NHIA. Uh, the NIA uh, card. NIA, NIA card. I, 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 I have my doubts. I have my doubts. That is why I think at this stage, there should be more engagement. There should be more encouragement. Let's do more PR work to encourage almost every working person, 18 and above, who's entitled to, to this card, to register. 18 and above. Yes, to register. Register and get your... I think you should spend more resources to encourage you to register and get your card. The, the offices you see, are not open. So, you see, because... The regional if, if, offices are because not open. Because listening to the challenges that even your company even faces, all right? It is clear that you are not fully operationalized. It is very clear. So uh, at this stage, I will not encourage any legal suit like what sometimes they say. Because when you file legal suit, you only find you know money for lawyers. You are credit job for lawyers. You understand? It's with more engagement. Please let us all sit down and see how we can engage our citizens to register more, so that the ultimate objective is clean up the system, so that we don't have this. You know, perennial thing, ghost names. Ghost names, every year, all the general reports come, ghost names and ghost names and ghost names. So let's do that thing. I, I think that is the objective. Okay. This is the of SIM, SIM cards. The yes. same objective. That people are using SIM cards when indeed it doesn't belong to them. So can we have a system where so we can trace... So isn't that why some people cannot be verified then? Maybe somebody registered the SIM. Yes, and they bought it. Exactly. Now they are using it. Exactly. They are trying to link. Yes, and, and they cannot linking. link. Yes. So, so that is why they can't be exactly. verified. Exactly. People use the same cards to also commit crimes and all that. So the policy objective is, is, is well intended. I agree with the it's policy well objective. Policy. It is yes. implementation that is problematic. That is what I'm saying. The manner we, we don't do the right thing. The, the communication is being done. Okay. Is this so, a Mr. Ganyu, you didn't so, answer this so, question. So the yeah. gentleman in Tamale, mm -hmm. they said they cannot correct his card. He mm -hmm. said his date of birth was wrong. What should he do? Yes, yeah, so he has to wait. He until, has to wait. Until the regional and district officers become operational. Then what happens to him linking his SIM card? If he's a public sector worker, he loses his salary. In fact, SIM card registration for a period of six Yes, and we but have if assured. he's a public sector worker, he should still use it with the so, wrong so date Jifa, of birth. Jifa, I mean, the uh, controller have given their deadline, which is 1st December. And I'm saying that in the month of November, would have been present in all the districts and regions. Okay, so, so there's still so opportunity register. for him People to can do, do updates, okay, people so, can do replacements. Okay, uh, so I think that message came from Tamale. Mm. Please wait till the office is opened Major. by 1st November. Yes. 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 So thank you very much uh, to gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Final word from you. Final word from yeah, you. Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll just make the point that, of course, there's the need for much more stakeholder consultation in terms of determining the deadlines 
for onboarding some of these user agencies. I totally agree. And I keep speaking to the mandate of the NIA that ours is to make registration facilities available to all Ghanaians to register for the Ghana card. We've been going through a process of recruitment just so that people can go and work in these permanent offices. And that's what has delayed the process. But now we are at the end of that particular process. And I believe that by the end of October, early November, all regional and district offices would have been operational. So people can go. So will you for, tell for us where cards. they are, these regional and district offices? Yes, we will put that out. You will put that so out. So when, when we have finalized all the measures to get the offices operational, perhaps okay. a week from now. Okay, because what I also know is that internet is one of the drivers of this work you do. Exactly. And in some of the districts, the internet is so bad. I've been on recent tours in the Volta region over the last uh, four months. And... Once you cross, you don't get internet. How are you sure that you'll be able to undertake this registration without the hitches that come with uh, internet yeah, so, access So it's problems. either cards are printed instantly or we do what we call deferred printing. And that is the problem. So, so I'm glad you mentioned that. That is the <laughs> fundamental problem most people have faced. Uh -huh. they've, re they've registered. Yes. They don't have the cards. I understand there are lots of cards in your office. Yes. You see, hmm. I know people will blame NIA, and I didn't want to get myself into a situation where I'm pushing it back to the general okay, public. So, so but let me say this. In the month of June, we printed some cards that were in backlog, about a million of them. We took them to the districts and regions, and we were virtually begging and pleading with people to come for these cards. You understand that? Because we recognize that going forward, these user agencies were going to start lying on the Ghana card and whatnot. So we wanted to do away with the backlog as much as possible. Because as much as we keep it, that's a huge cost mm -hmm. to us in having to, to manage that manage inventory. Data, yeah. so, so these are the problems that we've also faced. In the fall, there were instances where you go to a registration center, just about five or 10 people will be registered all day. So people also took it for granted. Now we've gotten to a point they say, SIM card registration, you must have Ghana card. Controller says you must have Ghana card. Senate says you must have Ghana card. Then at that point, people are beginning to recognize the use of the Ghana card and the reason why they must go for it. So that really is part of the challenge. So we would make sure that the officers early November they are all operational. Wherever you are located in this country, you'll be able to go and seek our service. All right, and that's where we have to end. I want yes. to say thanks to you, uh, Mr. Ganil. He is the Director for Corporate Affairs for the National Identification Authority. Many thanks to you, Gary Nimaku. He is a private legal practitioner. He's also the chairman of the uh, Gaming Commission. <laughs> and he's also an MPP Communications member. And he has many, many hats he wears. Many thanks to the Honorable Sam George, who is the Deputy Ranking Member for Communications Committee. Thanks to all of you for your messages, all of you for tweeting as well, and for staying with us throughout the morning. My name is Jifa Bampo. Thanks for joining us. We are back next week with another hot edition. Up next, of course,